I would advise you just to exercise for the first four weeks. Find find, find some good uh courses just to show you how to just walk chromatically. You know what I mean? You got to get those fingers used to. It's like when you first go into the gym. Who who puts on three hundred pounds and starts pumping iron? You know what I mean? And welcome to ForBasePlayersOnly.com. I'm John Liebman, founder and first baseman. You know, if you've ever wanted to learn bass, you should know that right now there are thousands of people inside the For Bass Players Only community. A lot of them over 50 and 60 and some even older than that. But they are learning bass, having the time of their life playing music that they love. You should come join them and experience that incredible transformation for yourself. Remember, you're never too old to groove. So let's play bass. My guest this week is Rob Harper, an old friend. He's a prolific bassist who wears many hats, not just the one he's wearing right now. He is a producer, ranger, songwriter, composer, and rapper. He first gained some notoriety from his collaborations with funk legends Robert Wilson from the Gap Band and Lewis Johnson, of course, from the Brothers Johnson. After studying at the Musicians Institute in L.A., they called it BIT at the time. I'm not sure if they still do or not, the, the base school there. Mm -hmm. Since then... Rob has forged an illustrious career as a session bassist, touring and performing bassist, and independent recording artist who also serves as a voting member of the Recording Academy. He's currently based in May in Maryland. This is his second time on for BassPlayersOnly.com. Hey, Rob, how are you? It's great to see you again. Hey, John, how you doing, man? All right. Our last interview was at the 2020 NAMM show, just before the whole world shut down. Oh, and we had a ball, too. I, I look at that interview sometimes, you know. Uh, two great spirits together. That's all I could say, yeah. you know. Well, at the time, you were talking all about, uh, it was called 301, Area 301, and mm -hmm. all the stuff that you had, some really cool uh, YouTube videos of that band. But, you know, a lot can happen in four years, and you're always a busy guy. You're always involved in something, doing something, writing something, recording something. So mm -hmm. let me just throw it to you. What's up? What's new? What's keeping you busy these days, Rob? Well, like you said, a lot of things can evolve in three in three to four years. And, and to get, to, I hate to be a bearer of uh, sad news, but uh, the, the Area 301 uh, band broke up. Um. We're still talking. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of things with upper management and everything right now that we have to sit down at the table and all come to an agreement. You know what I mean? I'm not going to just settle for just anything. And uh, I'll leave that alone. But great group of guys. Wish them the best. And I hope that maybe you'll see me with them later on this year or, or next year. But what that did was when the COVID hit, it pushed me into, um, you know, by having all these sponsors and stuff. Um, I wanted to um, just keep, uh, you know, like promoting for them and doing something. And it was hard to get around. People were scared to take photos, do photo sessions. And it was it was a mess. You know what I mean? Um, and and um, what I did was make a long story short, um, the drummer from 301, uh, he, he doesn't have transportation. He, he gets Ubered all over the place. Spoiled guy, <laughs> but anyway, uh, he's. Uh, I wanted to make sure he had food and everything, and I uh, went grocery shopping. And I'd never been over his house. We've been in the same band for two years. Isn't that something? <clears throat> Excuse me. Where's my water at? Oh, oh, I forgot to bring it. Okay, too bad. Suck it up. But anyway, uh, so what happened was I went over to his house with the groceries, man, John, and when I opened the door. Wow. Full-fledged recording studio right in his house. And I never knew it. He never talks about it. Real quiet guy, you know. Real what's that? Recluse? When you kind of keep to yourself a lot. Something yes. I'm doing lately. <laughs> but anyway, um he um he started he was he was since he doesn't have too many people over his house, he was excited to show me how he, you know, working his boards and everything. And the first thing I noticed was how fast he was moving. And, uh, you know, I've been, I'm from California originally. I, I've been to a, 
all the studios practically, major, minor, all of them. And I never seen nobody move that fast before. So that was the first thing that grabbed my attention. And then when he pushed the play button, John, my, my, my. Beautiful music to my ears. And I, I um, the first thing I said was, I said, um, 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 who mastered this? And you know what he said? To make me change my whole, uh, that, well, a big direction in my music career? He said, nobody. I just go for a good sound. And when, as soon as he said that, I said, me and this dude got to start making records. Now, I don't know what I'm going to make, but <laughs> I got to do something. And we started off with the um, making beats because I remember everybody was still locked down and I still had that Area 301 bug in me. You know, that was a big influence on me when it come to rap because I'm really like an old school guy when it comes to rap. I like the LL Cool J's and all the guys when they first started back in the 80s, you know, and they used a lot of real instrumentation. Um, some of the newer stuff uh, with all the scratching and stuff uh, just, just doesn't. <laughs> Just doesn't float with me. But anyway, it is what it is. So um, with that hot, that, that big influence from Area 301, I didn't even realize it at the time. But um, I wrote some beats. Um, rap beats, rock beats, no lyrics. Because mind you, I haven't did a record since 2000. I think it was 10. And my producer was was the the guy pulling all the strings on that. So this was something that I had my hands 100% in. So I wanted to, I didn't want to bite off too much that I couldn't chew. You know what I mean? So I, we started with the, uh, the, the, the album, seven songs, and it was instrumental and it was called Ride With Me. And where that concept came from, while people were locked down at one time, remember they only let you go to the gas station, the what, the grocery store? And I think that was it. And you had to come back home. That's when it was really COVID panic. Remember? Yes, very well. <laughs> so um, when I was riding to the gas station or wherever I was riding to the grocery store, I thought about that. And I said, people need some music to ride to while they depressed and stuff. You know what I mean? Going to the, making these little short COVID runs to the grocery stores and stuff. And so that's where the concept of Ride With Me came from, the title of the album. And um, so just you? Uh, what on the album? Yeah. Uh, no, me and uh Mark Brown, they call him Showtime. Uh, he plays drums, a little keyboards, and I did. Yeah, just me and him. And I did. I play. People don't know. I play a uh, rhythm guitar also. Wish <laughs> I could play lead, but I just didn't spend enough time doing all that. But uh, I, I play some good funky rhythm chops, you know. And um, so I played the rhythm guitar in the uh in the uh in the um. Uh, in the bass and he played the drums and the keyboards and we did the thing. And my wife came in and did a few background vocals. And what What's happened was, excuse me, title, what ride, is the title with me. Ride, ride with me. Ride with me. It, is it out it, now? Is it available? It is, yeah. It's everywhere. Uh, that's, that's kind of a sleeper because people don't know me for that side of stuff. You know, they know me for the funk stuff, which I gravitated yeah. back into. Uh, on off the with the with the, uh, the following recordings, and uh, so with that ride with me thing, uh, what happened was a radio DJ, which is my favorite DJ today, as we speak, Marvin Me, WQTQ FM of Hartford, Connecticut. He um uh he I don't know what he was doing. He I didn't talk contacting, but he picked it up and started playing it, and then somehow people all over Facebook start telling me. That they, that they was digging my little grooves and we just cracked up laughing because it was just, we were just having fun. You know what I mean? And ju just trying to do something. We weren't, we weren't looking for no, uh, <laughs> no radio play or, you know, no awards or nothing. So, you know, it, it happens like that sometimes, you know, it probably takes a lot of the nervousness and the tension about it when you're just thinking about playing and making music and having fun as opposed to thinking, OK, this has got to be just right. Everything's got to be just perfect. You know, so it's a lot more relaxed, I would think. Right. Yes, it was. It was much more relaxed. And we were banging them out, too. I think we did eight, seven, to eight songs. We banged that whole album out in two months. Isn't that crazy? Right. Awesome. 
Uh, tell me, g- give me a condensed version. I know you have a lot of gear and you like, you, you like different bases and you like maybe some toys or, you know, <laughs> all kinds of whatever, but, uh, g- give us the, the basics. What kind of bass or bases do you play? Amps, strings, some of the effects, just the, uh, the, the main go-to stuff. My, my main go-to stuff now is cause I got rid of all the other stuff really. You know, I used to be a, well, I don't want to start popping names off and let me be quiet, but uh, uh, I'm really, I'm solely playing Paul Lorette basses now. And uh, his friend, uh, Pierre, forgive me, Pierre, Camille Lero, something like that. They're business buddies. And Paul makes Pierre's basses, Cortex basses. So I got wow. the best of both worlds. They're, they're building me a Cortex bass now. And, um, I'm stuck with those. That's that's what I I like the funky look and the, and the funky sound. You know, it's not just the looks. A lot of people get fooled by the looks of my basses, but all the uh, the uh, the EQs and all the electronics is top grade. I would say in the top five in the world uh, right now. I'm, I'm leaning on uh, Germany with the uh, Delano pickups and the uh, uh, who makes those uh, EQs I got in there. From Germany, oh, I had a brain for it. But you, you were uh, you're a big fan of Fishman pickups. I understand Is that right. Well, I, well, well, originally I got with uh, Fishman because the tuners. I use their own their um, their tuners, um, and uh, what else I use? Let me look back real quick. Oh, and oh, here goes some stuff right here. I haven't even opened up yet. Um, they're tuners, and I got one. Of them, uh, I asked them about pickups because I wanted to build a, another bass from scratch, and um, excuse me, <clears throat> and use their uh, pickups in it. So I wasn't able to do it with the Cortex. I waited too late, um, but I still have some sitting up here. These are the latest. What, what do they call these? The uh, uh, Fluence soap yes. bars. Yeah, I use those, and I use the. Uh, Tone, this is a, a acoustic tone shaper. They got a lot of stuff, but uh, yeah, yeah. So. yeah you raised a good point. They, they do make more than just pickups. A lot of people just assume they're just only a pickup company. They make great mm-hmm. pickups and a bunch of other great stuff as well. Right. So I'm glad you mentioned that. A- anything else on the list? Uh, maybe uh, did you mention amps? Uh oh, I'm solely with one amp. Uh, I can't move this camera around. I'm in my um, I'm in my rehearsal Tell studio me. right now, and um, this studio is also open up to a few select people out in the public. A lot of people who does that. And this is my house, but I uh, I have a few select jazz groups that I uh, I let come in here. They have to take off their shoes and put on these little slip on things I have because you know it's just like that, you know. But I have. Let's get back to the amps. I'm, I've got a. I got a Fender basement over there. I got a collector's items. Remember Jens Benz? Yeah. Uh, Jeff Gensler. Yeah. Now yeah, he's, he's, he, he's he, now. Yeah. But I got one of the uh, the Jens Benz cabinets. Uh, they were liquidating them when they uh, when he when he sold out to the I think Fender or somebody. Um, I got behind me a GK because I always see those on TV. <laughs> And I never want to be without in case one of them R&B females or somebody or R&B singers ask me, do I have that? That's where I bought it. You know what I mean? But anyway, and then I got a, a trainer over uh, a yeah, trainer. That's a, that's I a, have a, you got one? In a long, you I, got one? A friend of mine had one. Actually, he was a drummer. I don't know why he had an amp, but yeah, I remember the trainer amp. This is a way, big, but way. Yeah, this is a big baby. Yeah. This is one of the newer ones. We you about, I think it was 2017, 18. It has a 15 and two tens and a uh, and a tweeter on top of that. And I think it's a 500 watt head. But oh, that sucker. That sucker's heavy. I ain't I'm taking it nowhere. <laughs> so oh, cool. I'm, I'm hey, I wanna... wait a minute, one more thing. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, John. Check this out. But you a bass player. I guess what else I got? Uh, a Trace Elliott. Oh, I'm afraid of those. There's, uh, <laughs> there's, there's just 
too many switches and knobs and buttons, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, I don't have the I don't have the head. I have a ca- big old carbon one thousand watt head sitting on it. But I always wanted one of those cabinets when I was a little kid, you know. So it's really like a collector's thing. And I was playing a gig at a church, and the pastor just gave it to me. And, and it has a wow. that's a big baby that's not going to be going nowhere either. It has. I don't know what it is in there. It's, it's, it's big. It's like two fifteens or something. I don't know what that. I can't see it from over here. But um, so I said all that to say, the all these amps are are for my um when my guys come in and use the uh, the uh, rehearsal studio, rehearsal studio, not recording. And then behind me right here, I have a um, my favorite amp. Like you asked me from the beginning, is the GR bass. Oh yes, yeah. I was going to yeah. ask you about that. The best, man. The best. You got to try them out, John. Uh, man, I, I don't want to. talked to those folks at the NAMM show this past year in uh, 2024. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to play nothing else. That Once you play once you play that, man, it, it, it had it, 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 all the answers that I, I couldn't get out of these other amps came right through that one. And, uh, you know, with, with funk, I like a lot of bottom on stage when I'm playing live. And, um, a lot of these amps I just named wouldn't give me that booty, that that boom. They wouldn't give me enough. I mean, I can get it, of course, through the PA systems, but I like to feel it like a monitor on my for my amplifier. I'm one of those type of bass players. You know, a lot of some bass players don't even bring an amp; they just go straight through the PA. But I like mine's blowing behind me, blowing my jeans or whatever. You know, <laughs> I like to feel that air pushing a little bit. And these babies, man, they are so solid without distortion. I just crank them up. And then, like when I'm out playing live, I never turned it past three. That's how that's how wow. strong they are. And uh, what else? And uh, the, the the head I got is an eight hundred. That's more than enough power. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. That's uh, that's how you do it. Huh? Hey, let me ask you about. I wanted to ask you about playing bass and learning bass because uh, I've got you here. It's a great opportunity mm-hmm. to ask you this. For bass players only is a bass instruction site, and I've got people from pretty much every state in the U.S. and uh, I'm not sure 50, 60, 70 countries worldwide. I don't know it's probably more than that now. They're coming to for bass players only every day, learning how to play bass. Most right. of them, as I at the beginning, are over 50, 60, some of 70. I've got students in their 80s actually, mm-hmm. mostly men, but we've got women too. And they're not trying to make a career out of it. They want to play maybe some classic rock riffs with their buddies or some blues shuffles, maybe a little funk R&B or maybe a little walking bass, you know. Mm-hmm. So I want to ask you just, just to you know give you some context. I tell you, sometimes arthritis kicks in when we get to that age. I said we, you know, <laughs> we get yeah. to that age. There are other things like that. So I tell you all that just to give you a context because I want to ask you, Rob, Mm-hmm. What advice do you have for somebody like that who wants to learn to play bass? What do you think they should be thinking about, or what questions should they be asking? What kind of goals should they have? You know, bring, bring it down to earth for them. What do you think? What do you have? You to know, say to them? it's funny you ask that because you know I, I teach privately too. I'm just taking a break for, uh, for this year, but I've, I've done a lot. And my thing was specializing in beginners, and the most the the the, the, the biggest issue I saw. That either uh, they either they either progress or they regress. Is that the word? They went the other way. Is um, dexterity. Um, they 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 need to learn some some exercises and some proper hand positionings because a lot of them get frustrated. It sounds simple to pick up a bass and play, but I remember when I played picked up a bass. I'm gonna tell you something. It's funny. When I picked up a bass, guess, uh, without before I took a, a formal lesson, guess how I was playing, John? Like I was like this. I was using my thumb to fret the notes. I mean, that you only that from Louis, because I know he used to do that. I was watching his video what, you know, back in the eighties when it came out. I said, "Yeah, what are you you're not going to do that." Yeah, <laughs> well, well, some guys could get away with it, but I, I was like, "No, no, no." And so, you and know, I, if it, it worked for him. So yeah. I don't know. I just and, and, and when I say dexterity, dexterity, the stretching of the fingers. A lot of people get frustrated because they don't know how to uh, pivot. 
you know, when they when they on that when that fretboard, you know, you had that thumb in the behind there, and then you pivot to get here and pivot to get there. If you got the, you know, because a lot of people don't have big long fingers like us, you know what I mean? And uh, so that's the major thing. Because once they get over that hurdle, then it's more, it's fun to them. You know what I mean? But a lot of them stop because they're not having fun. They pick it up for a minute and it feels awkward and they don't have nobody to show them the hand positions and stuff right. So, hey, maybe check with for bass players only. And, John, I have a nice video for you guys on that soon. Hello. We do. We do. We got all that stuff. You got it already. Thank you. For the yeah, thank you for the shout out. But I was uh, I was asking just in general what what you can share. What you know, I I like what you said. I like what you said. A lot of people go about it wrong, or they just uh, assume that they know what they do, what they want to do, or how they should do it, or they're not as open or willing to learn. I mean, the people that are coming to me when you're older generally you have a better attitude and you're willing to listen and you're willing to, you know, do your homework and things like that. But uh, another thing that comes up all the time is those, these these people doing this crazy stuff on YouTube and people. And you mentioned that. No. No, Sorry. And you mentioned one thing, you mentioned one thing that had me thinking uh, when you said uh, discipline, a lot of people don't, they don't with this fast paced world today. If you if anybody's listening to us right now and they want to play bass, uh, I also would advise you to also you got to you got to it's like going to the gym. You got to say, OK, and don't don't kill yourself. Just say, OK, 30 minutes on Wednesday at a such and such time and maybe 30 days on the weekend, 30. I mean, 30 minutes on the weekend and you stick to those times. You know what I mean? And if you have to move them, move them somewhere else and stick to those times. But those first two get. I would advise you just to exercise for the first four weeks. Find find some good uh, courses just to show you how to just walk chromatically. You know what I mean? You got to get those fingers used to. It's like when you first go into the gym. Who who puts on three hundred pounds and starts pumping iron? You know what I mean? You have to Outside get inside of you and me, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to get up there and uh, you have to take baby steps first. So get that uh. Get that dexterity and that uh, movement going for about four or five weeks, and then take it from there, man. You know, and it's it's a great instrument. Do you know who Neil Jason is? I heard of the name. I can't put a face on it. New York guy, and he's, he's got good buddies with Will Lee, so he'd sub on the Letterman show, and he played. I was he playing with it. Brian Ferry, Roxy Muse. I, he was playing played with a whole bunch of people. But last time I interviewed him, he says, I think of my fingers and my thumbs as 10 little athletes. <laughs> so oh, when wow. you talk about going to Oh, I just, you reminded me of that. I wanted to share that with you because I thought it was a great way of looking at it. Yeah, because well, how, are you gonna, how are you going to, see what people do is, see, I don't teach my, my, my students that. How are you going to teach a kid? Well, they, they do it all the time, but you want to just say, play this major scale where they can't even play chromatically yet. Note for note, you know what I mean? And so that kind of frustrates them, you know what I mean? And it works a lot because they've been teaching like that forever. But I think a quicker way is to get the do 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and just move that all over up and down the neck for about three to four weeks. You know what I mean? And then you're also conditioning, getting the, the finger muscles like your friend said, you get the athletes. You're building the strength and the endurance and the fingering and stuff. And uh, it's also uh, a mind, what they call that? You know, it's when the, when yes. the mind is connected to the mu- muscle memory. Muscle memory, yes. <laughs> I, 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 I like what you said a lot. I, I do put a twist on that, though, in my lessons. Instead mm-hmm. of just going, do 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 I say, why can't we make this groove? And I have lessons, just chromatic exercises, moving up and down the bass, but they groove. They're musically satisfying, musically rewarding, fun to play. Do, 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 do. That's smart. Smart. Students love it. And, you know, all kinds of creative things up and down the bass. They they just eat it up. Hey, I know that you had a lot of things in addition to the questions that I have. I want to just throw out some of the, the highlights that, that you had mentioned to me, and you covered a lot of them. 
But uh, you, the, you have a, another new album that's due out this year, right, in November? Yes. Um, it, it, the, uh, this song that I'm putting out July the 1st called uh, Player of the Year uh, yeah. is um, actually going to is a, a song from that album. I just um, oh, let me let me slow down and mention something real crucial right now. Stop. Put the brakes on. This year, 2024, I've taken off from live performances for this whole year. I'm I'm getting my health together, and uh, I've been running all my life. And this is I've never had a break, and never. You hear me? And uh, the doctors were they kept, they've been telling me for the last three or four years, and I finally last year when I was out there gigging, I felt some things when I especially when you do those outdoor concerts and that sun is beaming on you. Um, I was overweight. I wasn't eating right. All those stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, wasn't drinking. I don't really drink too much no more, so I wouldn't worry about that. But the over, the not eating healthy and and, and not working out and uh, not sleeping right, writing songs, staying up to the sun, come up the next day. I was doing all that, and it really wrecked my 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 health. And uh, so it's been what six months almost now, right? Since January. <coughs> Uh, January, February, March, April, May, June. Yeah. Uh, six months now that I've been uh, just laying low since I came back from the NAM show um, and uh, just eating cleaner. I'm doing, thank God for Google. I can just get on the computer and, and Google information about health. I don't, I don't have to listen to all these Facebook and Instagram folks, doctors, you know what I mean? <laughs> Gotta be careful with that stuff. And then I got three. I I got emails from AARP. Okay, <laughs> and I got um, I have, uh, I have, I have. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I just learned something too. Really, my wife told me about this. Um, I, I don't just rely on your primary care doctor. If if something else is bothering you real bad, you need to get asbestos in that area. I never thought about that. I'm I'm not perfect. I don't know every. I don't claim to know everything. But my wife is into all that stuff. She's doing insurance claims and health stuff and all that stuff. And she told me I needed specials because I was battling with diabetes. I didn't like, I don't like talking like, I don't get on Facebook and Instagram and, and go, woes me and please pray for me. And I'm, I don't, I just, that's just not my style. I like to put happy moments up on Facebook and Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if, if I really dig in, my, I got friends that I can call and say, pray for me. You know what I mean? people that I really know. So anyway, make a long story short, I was kind of hiding it for a while, but people could tell when they see me out there playing, something's not, not quite right with Rob. What's going on? You know, they could tell by your movements and stuff. And uh, anyway, <laughs> I decided to uh, stop playing around and I got these specialists and they told me what I needed to do. And all three of them, I got three of them. Uh, they told me, all when all three of them told me I need to take the time off, I'd have to be retarded not to listen to that. You know what I mean? And I didn't want to, John, but I said, you know what, man? I got to take these. First, it was just supposed to be into October. But I thought about it. When October come and I open the gates to go back out there, I don't want to jump straight in from not playing no gigs to no big, long Christmas gigs and no New Year's Eve gigs. No, no, no. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the whole year off. You know what I mean? Enjoy the holidays and everything, but that doesn't stop the music. What I'm doing is I'm spending more time networking uh, with a, even though I'm an independent artist, I know I've been fortunate enough to know and, and have relationship with a lot of major artists. So now this gives me more time to talk to them, spend more time with them and hang out with them and stuff. You know what I mean? Let them get to know me better. And so that's working real good to my advantage. And then I'm, I'm writing an album and I don't have nothing else to do but go to the gym. <laughs> Lucky me, huh? You have a title for the album? Yes. And you're going to get the exclusive right now. It's called Fire. And it's spelled F-I-Y-A-H. <laughs> Fire. Fire. I love it. <laughs> and that'll be out November of 2024? Yep. 
Uh, I wanted to get out in October, but I, it's going to be late October, early November. But of course, you know, right. I'll, I'll make sure I send you a copy of it. I don't think you got, I haven't sent you none of my stuff, have I? I think I uh, forgot about you. A while. How could you forget about me? I, I know. Uh, you know, I got a, I got a CD list like just for, um, what you call them? Complimentaries and stuff. About, about, it's like 50 people. And uh, well, it hit me now. So I owe you some, I owe you that one and a couple of other ones. Uh, so look forward to that in about, give me a couple of months. I look I forward rush, to that. I don't want to rush that. One other thing here uh, while we're talking. You had an interesting encounter with Rick James's daughter. What was that all about? Oh, that was so cool. Uh, like I said, I got more time now. And, um, you know, of course, you know, Rick James and all the funk guys were, that's my forte. And so that's who who inspired me the most to keep to do what I do. I do funk today. It's 2024. And, you know, funk is not the biggest genre out there selling right now. But that's just what I do. That's my passion. And and, and I see how by me sticking to what I love to do, it's, it's making its own way for me. You know? But back to Rick James' daughter. The name is Ty James. <laughs> a beautiful soul. Uh, she's the oldest of, uh, I think it was three kids. Uh, and so she's running his estate. And doing a real good job. She put the film out first, documentary or something that was on uh, TV last year, I think it was, or something. And then um, she has a, um, she she made a production play out of it. She hooked up with some other guy, forgot his name. And uh, my wife, I'm spending more time with the wifey now. Uh, we go, we, uh, she, uh, we decided to go check out the play. Man, I didn't know, you know, I haven't been in a play in a long time. And so I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be this little, you know, ah, whatever. None of them really turned me on. They were okay. Um, I liked it. If they had good stories, I was I was digging that. But theatrical and all that kind of stuff, uh, performance-wise, the, the, most plays don't turn me on. Just the stories. But this one, story was down. The dancer was down. The acting was down. And I went and I, and I enjoyed the show. But during intermission, I, I went to, I don't know, I went to get something to eat or something, a restroom. And I, I've i been trying to contact his daughter for a while on Instagram, and I could never get a response. And then I bumped right into her at the show, and nobody really knew who she was, but I did, you know. And so we got to connect, and uh, that's a great thing. So I can't I can't tell you what we, we're talking about right now, but uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be it's going to be some nice surprises uh, in the future, you know? What what does she do? Is she is she an artist? Is she a performer? Is she a writer? Is she a producer? What is she? Uh, she's, what's she's, a, she's a producer. Uh, what else? A manager. Uh, what I call, investor. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yes. And Those are good people, though. Because I'm a on their good play. side. So you, you're slick. If I keep talking, I'm going to give it away. All right. We could leave it at that and, and leave the people wanting more. We'll take care of it in a, in a follow-up. <laughs> uh, hey, I, I, I do want to ask you this. It's kind of my signature sign-off question. If you can imagine, what would you be if you weren't a bass player? Something outside of music. If I weren't a bass player? A football player? Really? Yeah, I was what a real position. Good, I was a real good one too. As a matter of fact, when okay. I was, it, I had to finally break the ties in high school. We had the number one football team, Banning High, uh, Phoenix Banning High in uh, Wilmington, California. We had a number one team for years. We had uh, the uh, the Rams. You remember the L.A. Rams? Their Ooh. coach, their they had the the quarterback Ferragamo. Yep. Back in the days, Ferragamo's brother was the coach of our team. And we were cleaning out everybody. Uh, but the music bug overtook me. You know what I mean? And uh, What position do you play on the football team? What oh, me defense back. Mm -hmm. Defensive back. And uh, I was good at it. But I can also play other positions because I can run real fast. I was a great track star. I was, I was, making, I was in the newspapers when I was in elementary school for running track. I wish yeah. I could find some of that stuff now. But uh, I was really a great athlete. I used to do somersaults, backflips, gymnastics. I did all that stuff. Ooh. Karate. 
Yeah, yeah, I did it all, buddy. I even tried to be Mike Tyson. It's a scar left up there somewhere. I had to retire from that. Uh, not Mike Tyson. What's his name? Leonard? Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard? Oh, Sugar Ray. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't go with the scars. And then I got one under the eye here when I was trying to be Evil Knievel. Uh, so I, I did a lot of, a little bit of everything back in the days. But uh, the football was the main thing. And uh, I remember I was I was after school. They taught me in a playing football because of my physique and stuff. I I really wasn't playing in high school. I stopped in junior high. But uh they the guys kept they knew about me in the neighborhood. It's a small community, Carson, California. And they all got together, about six, seven of the main guys. And, you know, those guys are tough. I think it was about 12 of them. And they came up to me at, at the lunch table one time and hey man, we need you on the team, you know. It was kind of uh, yeah. what they call that? Not threatening. What's the other word? Huh? Intimidating. Intimidating. And so I said, okay. <laughs> and uh, I was out there for a good while and doing great. But you know what I didn't like? We were bus to school. So I didn't like staying after school and seeing the buses leave. I just, uh, football just wasn't enough to keep me. I wanted to go home and play my bass. And then it got to a time right after I left the football team, made everybody mad. I couldn't go to school without my bass. So I said, I got to take some music classes in high school because I can't, I don't want to leave my bass at home. That's how, how glued to it I was back in them days. And so I grabbed, I took some, uh, what, uh, uh, what you call it? Jazz stage band, stage band and then something else. And uh, they allowed us to bring our basses and uh, I was cool then. Yeah, I played guitar in the stage band, the jazz band in school. Yeah, I great memories. You know what? The, the big song was was Rocky from the movie, and I had a big guitar solo and <laughs> played it in the, uh, the whole school. Everybody, yay! Not, not because it was me, but, but because it was a guitar solo. Well, maybe because it was me. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Rob, this is great. Keep us posted. Let me know when the new album comes out. Bye. Yeah. Very much looking forward to it. Much luck, continued success to you. Very inspiring how you sounded like you you started the the relaxing thing a little reluctantly, and then it looks to me like you kind of got to like it. <laughs> you extended it longer than you had originally planned. What whatever reason you have, it's it's all good. I think we could all take a lesson from that. I know I can, and I'm sure my wife would concur. So much luck, continued success. Keep us posted on everything, and I look forward to our next conversation because you're going to have a lot more big time far out news to share i know that so thanks for being on my show again rob and thanks for inviting me keep that funk alive oh absolutely you're watching for bassplayersonly.com i'm john leapman founder and first baseman if you've ever wanted to learn bass you should know that right now there are thousands of people inside the for bass players only community a lot of them over 50 or 60 and so on and they are learning bass having the time of their life playing music that they love. You should come join them and experience that incredible transformation for yourself. Remember, you're never too old to groove. So let's play bass. Thanks again to my special guest, Rob Harper. I will see you all next week right here, same time, same place. In the meantime, let's play bass.